Hello, Sim captains and crew. Welcome again to Stansted in the United Kingdom in the Cirrus SF-50 light jet. Today's video will focus on how to load a flight plan into the Garmin G1000 Navigator. Much of these inputs can be used on aircraft featuring the GNS 530 and 430 series, moving map displays as well. The paints you see here are thanks to Death Cooler and are available on xplane.org and the link in the description box below. Welcome aboard! The first thing, of course, we'll need to do is establish power to the flight deck. If you haven't watched the cold and dark tutorial, we'll put a link in the uh, top right corner right now for that, and feel free to go back and take a look at that. In the meantime, we're going to establish battery power starting from left to right with batteries one and two. We'll also turn on our position lights so that people know we are in the flight deck. None of the other switches are needed at this time. In order to conserve fuel, we'll program the G1000 with the engine off. If you have a flight plan loaded from a previous flight, select Menu, and then using the outer ring, this has an inner and outer as most of these buttons do. With the outer ring, select Delete Flight Plan, and then press the Enter key. For the programming of this flight, we're going to use the flight plan outlined in our general aviation flight planning video already on the channel. I'll quickly summarize those waypoints. DVR is Dover. We have Famen, F-A-M-E-N, Dynan, Rousey, GTQ, STR, Lupin, Impax, Tedgo, DKB, and then finally on to Munich. Dover, DVR will be our first waypoint that we'll mark. In order to do that, we are going to select by pressing the center of the button with the outer key or the outer ring. We're going to scroll down. And then from this point, then you're going to go to the inner. It'll open your waypoint information. And then you can either click or use your scroll wheel. The inner one will select the letter. The outer one will move the character left or right. I'll do a couple of these waypoints, and then after that, I'll uh, skip to the end. Uh, that way, you guys will get the general idea of how to do this. Okay, now we have Dover here. We'll confirm that is in the UK. That is where we want to go. We will select Enter. Enter again. And now you can see below Stansted, we now have Dover. I'll zoom in here just to make sure everyone can see that. Our next waypoint is Famen, F-A-M-E-N. Now this is actually a GPS waypoint as uh, signified by the uh, five digit character. And we'll begin entering it the same way. We're gonna go this center key, and that's gonna open our waypoint information. And then we are simply going to uh, scroll, F, outer ring steps, Back to the inner ring. And again, back to the inner ring here. Famine, that is in France. And we can see that's going to be a bearing of 123, 200 miles. We will enter, enter. And I will do one more here. And then I'll kind of skip to the end. That way you guys uh, will get the general idea how this works. Our next one's Dynan, D-I-N-A-N. D-I-N-A-N. 
N A. And N. It's in Belgium. And again, we will enter, enter. So we have Stansted, Dover, Famine, Dynan. I'll go ahead, pause it right here. I'll add the rest of the flight plan and then we will resume from that point. I've pulled this screen up here as I was entering Rousey, which is the waypoint after Dynan. And here you can see it gives us two options. We have one in Luxembourg and one in Japan. Um, the outer ring will scroll up and down. Um, Japan, obviously, according to this, is 5,100 miles away, which is of little interest to us at this point. So we'll continue by selecting Luxembourg and again, enter, enter. And again, we see this with the Strasbourg Waypoint or STR. We see France, Portugal, Russia, and Ecuador. And we'll do as we have been. We'll select France, and that's the one we desire. We've now reached our last waypoint, which will be DKB, which, if memory serves me correct, correctly, is a Dinkelsbuhl. And as you can see, if you uh, look just to the left of where I'm working there, you can see um, we have entered in all of the flight plan. Okay, so um, working top to bottom, we've entered in all of our waypoints. And I believe I've highlighted, I, I think it was Rousey and uh, Strasbourg. If we go to the outer ring, and then we scroll back, you can see the... Um, It'll illuminate here for altitude and then the actual waypoint. And using our scroll wheel, we can verify our flight plan. This is functionally, for those of you more familiar with the heavier airplanes, this is essentially your step. So when you step through your waypoints, and we're making sure we're going the right direction, as it looks like we are. And here around impacts, I think we jump up and start heading north. Um, Around some airspace there, and let's see if we can maybe we can zoom out and that's uh, that's way further out than we need. All right, so all of that looks satisfactory at this time. We'll scroll back up to our beginning. Now, on the day I recorded the production of the flight plan, Runway 22 was in operation. So I've pulled up here on the Avitab. Um, this is my Navigraph subscription here. So uh, Runway 22 is a Det1 Romeo departure. If you look here, um, Depart 22 at 1.2 miles will be a left turn to 154. And then we're going to head out. Now, what we've entered in the flight plan is really all that's necessary uh, to, to get from point A to point B or airport A to B. And in fact, you don't even have to do that. You can simply do a direct to and then and fly there. Um, we've built the route using Sky Vector, which again um, is mentioned or uh, is a, another video on the channel. But if we go back to this departure procedure, we will see that Detling or DET is where we actually, this is the end of this departure procedure. So we're gonna assume we're gonna fly this procedure. So we'll go back over here to our active flight plan. On the far right, we're gonna press procedure and we're gonna select departure as we are flying out. And again, that'll be the larger ring on the bottom right. And then we will enter. This will populate, and we're going to select the DET-1 Romeo, because we've already looked at that and said that lines up with our runway, etc. That one Romeo, okay. And you can see it's listed there. There's all the other departure procedures. The uh, CLNs are Clactons. We'll enter. And then we can see that's a runway 22. Actually, let's scroll back up here as well. 
So it's a runway 22. 1.1 miles. This actually says 1.2. And then it's going to be 222. I'm actually not sure where it's getting that, unless that is the, uh, it might be the radial off of something else here. Um, the DET 30 would be the uh, 30 miles from DET. But we can see here if we zoom in, or maybe not, Let, let's, uh, let's select this, let's load. And then here we can see the departure procedure loaded. We can check the altitude restrictions, which are over on the far right here as well. So we'll scroll back up here. At 30 miles, it's going to be a block between three and 5,000 altitude. So at 30 miles, we can see we have to be above 3,000. At 334 Yankee. I'm assuming that's here. Yankee Zulu, so Yankee's the 25th character in the alphabet. So I believe that's the 25 miles there. And then we're at 5,000 feet. So that uh, checks with our procedure as well. And as we continue to scroll out, we can also see Detling is 5,000 feet, which we also have here. And then I would like to zoom in here, yep. And then we'll use that outer ring again, and we'll step through. And this looks like it matches up with our departure procedure. So we have it loaded in here. Our final altitude is 5,000 feet. Uh, I'm gonna close this briefly here. And what I wanna do is I wanna set our altitude that I forget which one of these it is altitude ah here we go so if you'll notice the bottom left altitude button that is going to change above our altimeter so that was 5,000 feet is our stop altitude which we'll go ahead and set that now the outer ring is five thousand or is thousands the inner ring is one thousands or cor sorry, correction. The outer ring is in 1,000 foot increments. The inner ring is 100 foot increments. So we have prepared our departure procedure. It is loaded. That's satisfactorily done. We have a stop altitude for our departure procedure. One of the other things, if you click the CDI, you can see you've armed GPS here. If you're using a localizer, ILS, or VOR, LOC1 or LOC2 will be depending on what you have into NAV1 or NAV2. So be sure if you're flying a uh, GPS departure or arrival procedure that you have this configured correctly. That could cause some heartache. Another thing of interest here on the G1000 is your transponder. In most aircraft, your transponder is a separate device on the panel. On the G1000, on the PFD, we'll click XPDR. Then we can see we're in a standby mode. We can click on or altitude. We'll see that also change here on the transponder indicator. You can see the, uh, the R there as it uh, probably transmit receives. If we want to squawk VFR, you can see here I have 2114 loaded. I do VFR, it gives us our VFR 1200 squat code. Go, go back to transponder, go to code, and then it changes this to a series of numbers. So we could do 2110 or a million, whatever, um, and then it'll change it there. Also on most flight decks, you have the timer or a stopwatch. On the G1000, it's here under this timer ref. You click it. Again, functions with that outer ring moving it. You can select enter, and then the timer will begin to go. Enter again to stop, enter again to reset. 
you can set your minimums, you turn them on, and then as you can see, it gives us the barrow uh, barometric minimums. So you can set that, and then you see we get the blue uh, cursor moving up the altimeter. So a couple little uh, features and how they differ from the normal aircraft. Um, that's how you access these. I'm not sure if the, I have limited time in this aircraft and with the G1000. So the glide and VX and VY, I'm not sure if those work. Uh, perhaps when we do the actual flight video, uh, we can play with this en route and, and see how it, how it functions compared to some of the other uh, systems and other aircraft. If we slide back over to the MFD, you'll see that we, um, we've completed our flight plan here on, um, on our navigation all the way to Munich. The final thing we would have to do is put in EDDM. Uh, there will be a departure, or sorry, an arrival procedure. Well, once we get there, we'll look into the weather and see how it looks as we approach there. But again, that is going to be procedure, and then we'll select arrival, which will give us our uh, our star, and then approach will be our final initial approach fix, uh, or you know, to an ILS or an RNAV approach or uh, to a visual, whatever the case may be. So that, uh, again, that order will be arrival, then approach. And we'll do that in route, you know, weather changes, and we'll, we'll see what it looks like once we get there during our actual flight. As always here on FBFT, we thank each of you for spending your time with us. We'd like to say thanks to our viewers and subscribers coming back. And to those of you seeing us again for the first time, uh, we appreciate your, your time, and hopefully you'll enjoy our content and come back and see us some more. As we always say on this channel, plan the flight and fly the plan. We hope to see you on board again soon.